Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Clarence. I make Init and Workflows and Automations. I try to implement AI where possible. As promised in the previous video, every video I put out will be more interesting and more in depth than the last one. Today, that's definitely the case as we'll be going over the inbox management agent I created. The inbox management agent is triggered by an incoming email. It'll then classify the email and send it down the according route. For this example, I've created four different routes, a high priority route, a customer support route, a promotional route, and a invoice and bidding route. Before I show you how to recreate this inbox management system for yourself, I'll first go over how it works. Then I'll show you how it's set up. And at the end of the video, I'll tell you ways how you can fit this to your own needs or how you can elaborate on this to make it even more intriguing and more capable of more difficult tasks. Let's get into showing how it works first. I've told ChatGPT to write me a brief message saying urgent, quick assistance required. I'll send the email to myself. The workflow is triggered by an incoming email. It then goes through the text classifier, which assigns it a label. In this case, it was an urgent email, so it goes down the high priority route. A label is then added in my Gmail. It's sent through to ChatGPT, which creates a draft based on the prompt that I've given it. And then lastly, a draft is created in my Gmail. Let's verify. We can see a label has been added, high priority, that's great. And also a draft has been written. Please take note that the prompt I've given ChatGPT to write me a draft has been very brief. If you want it to be more elaborate, if you want it to include certain things, you can certainly do that by increasing the depth of the prompt. But for this example, I've keeping it short and easy to understand for everyone. Secondly, I've sent myself another email. This time it involved a customer support question. Once again, the email got triggered. It went through the text classifier. It went down the customer support route because it was a question to customer support. That added the label, created a response and actually sent the response this time. You can imagine coupling this to a factor database or another data store where you have all FAQs. And then instead of re responding to every email yourself or letting your customer service do it, you can let AI do an amazing job. Let me show you the email I sent to myself and then the response it created. So we can see the customer support label was added. This was the incoming message. And then below we have the report request answer. Thirdly, I've sent a promotional email to myself. As you can see, it got classified correctly as promotions. The label was added and a summary was written. On the right side, you can see the summary that was written. You could add a telegram note, a Slack note or whatever you prefer to send over the summary to the channel you're using on a daily. I didn't do it in this case, but that is one of the things you could add for yourself. As we can see again, label was added. This was the email of which it made a summary. I didn't send the summary anywhere. So it's only available in the workflow on my output side, but you could, as I said, you can easily send it, this to whatever channel you desire. Then lastly, I've sent an invoice, a fake invoice email to myself. It got classified for the finance and billing route. A label was added and a summary was made for the finance department and it got actually sent through to the finance department. Let's check. As you can see, a label was added to the in fake invoice and then it immediately created an email that was sent through to the finance department, which in this case is myself. This was the summary. This should give you an idea of how it works and how you can add like your own categories. If you have different labels for whatever, for your business, for your personal life, you can change them up. You can change the prompt very easily and it can be as elaborate as you want or as you need for your business. Let's quickly go over how to set this up because it's a bit different than we did last time where we just use tools. Here we use notes instead, but you have to use the right input from the previous note to set them up. Since for the last example, we use the invoice route, I'll go down that route to show you how I set it up, but I'll also show you the prompts of the other routes, we copy them and use them as an example for yourself to create more elaborate ones. Let's get right into it. For the Gmail trigger, I have linked it to my personal Gmail through the credentials. Then the trigger should be every time a message is received. And then finally, I only wanted to get the, get the emails which are unread. On the right side of the screen, you can get the output. Well, this was the invoice email here under text is everything that was in that email. Then from the Gmail trigger, it is put through to a text classifier. We wanted to read the text from the email. We input text as I did previously, but as I showed you, you can just grab it from the left side. Then you add the labels and write a brief description. 
for the finance and billing route, I've written emails related to financial matters, such as invoices and billing statements, which is really straightforward. You can elaborate on this if you notice that there are some emails not being labeled properly. But for this example, this worked perfectly fine. On the right, you can see where it is outputted. It's outputted down the finance and billing route. For the text classifier to read and understand the emails, it is coupled to a large language model. I chose JetGPT, GPT 40 Mini to be more precise, which is more than capable of handling emails such, like, such as this. If you are getting more complex emails, you might want to use GPT 40 or any update in the future. But for now, GPT 40 Mini should suffice. Then from the text classifier, it gets passed on to the label adder in Gmail. For this note, we set operation to add a label and we want to add a label to the correct message. In this case, we use a variable because every email has its own ID. And we take the ID from the left side and add it here. As you can see, dollar sign JSON dot ID, which is the corresponding email it needs to add a label to. And it'll add a label you desire, in this case, finance or billing. Once the label is added, the message is passed through to a large language model. In this case, I use GPT-40 Mini and I've written a very short prompt. You want to tell ChatGPT what it is you needed to respond to. In this case, that didn't come from the previous note, but it came from the original Gmail trigger. So you open up the Gmail trigger on the left side and you go down to text and then you just grab the text from the left, add it here. I added it after here is the incoming email. And as you can see, my prompt is very short. I would recommend if you actually implement this inbox management agent to elaborate on the prompt by, for example, adding from from the left side, you can respond by saying hi, first name and then actually grabbing their first name. One thing I would highly recommend if you have a particular style of writing emails or you wanted to include certain things is adding examples to your prompt. You can just do this by copy and pasting previous written emails by yourself and ChatGPT will learn from them and use it as a example to whatever it outputs. In the case for the finance and billing route, the email created by ChatGPT is directly forwarded to the Gmail node and sent to the end user. Settling up the labeling nodes is the same for each route, but I'll quickly show you, but you can just copy them if you want. So the only variable you need to add from a previous node is the message ID, which is the same for each of these labeling nodes and then the label you wanted to add. In this case, it was high priority. In the next one, it'll be customer support, as you can see. And again, only added the message ID. And then for promotions, again, only the message ID and the label I wanted it to add. The only thing that's left is showing you the prompts of the language models. Please be aware that I've kept the prompts very brief and I would definitely recommend elaborating on them and making them more specific. For the high priority route, I told it to create a draft. This is the prompt I've written. And based on this prompt, it would give me a particular output. I've showed you the output. For the customer support route, I told it to create an email and respond to the person immediately. This is the prompt that I've written. You're a customer service representative. Your job is to respond to incoming customer support inquiries as accurately as possible. And if it is an inquiry, you cannot handle, please refer user to the following email. And I've added a bogus email, but you can use a personal email of one of your customer support representatives in case it would be something that the language model would not know how to handle. It'll be forwarded to someone. One thing you should imagine is adding a factor storage database to this node where you would store all the FAQs and all the information about your company to give the language model access to it. Then it could just sift through all the information and write the best email it can possibly give. For the promotion drought, I just asked it to summarize an email and it's not going anywhere. So it would just only be on the output side. So now that I've shown you how to set it up, I'll quickly go over some things you could add to make it a better fit for your personal life or for your business. For the high priority route, for instance, there would be the possibility to add a Telegram note or Slack channel note, whichever you prefer to send you the draft email and ask for confirmation if it's okay. Then in the case, the draft email will be correct. You could just tell it to send the email and the email would be sent in the next note to take out the step where you would have to go into your Gmail, look at your drafts and send them manually. For the customer support route, I already went over the ability to add a factor store tool to give it all the information needed to write a perfect response. 
but let's say the large language model doesn't have access to the right information to handle this inquiry, it would now respond to the user telling it to send to forward the email to a different email address. But you can also do that yourself in the workflow. So you would add a note sending the email on to a human who could solve the issue instead of replying to the email. And of course, there's the possibility to add many more labels. Each label, I assume, would have its own route and you can prompt the large language models accordingly. I hope this video has given you some insight into what's possible with N8N. I know it's been quite a leap from the last video and from now on, these videos will only get more interesting and more advanced. If there's anything that was unclear or I didn't show properly in the video, please be sure to leave it down in the comments and I'll respond to you as quickly as I can. If you're having a problem with your own N8N workflow project, there is a possibility for a free consultation. Link to that is down below. All that's left for me is thanking you for watching yet another video. I hope you learned something from it. If you watched all the way through the end, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. It means a lot and I'll see you guys in the next video.